Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the third episode of the story, in which the author finds himself slash herself in an alternate reality where he, she knows everything that will ever happen. He, she is encouraged to err on the side of caution. But where's the fun in that? Find out what happens when you throw a crazy, self-centered Naruto fan into the Saratobi clan. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. Hokage's office the Sandame couldn't take his eyes off the paperwork in his hands. It was a release form for Yuzuki Yugao. The file stated that Yugao would be temporarily removed from the ANBU Corps to take on a long-term S-Class mission. To the neutral observer, the S-Class was there because of the value of the escorts. A party that included the Kyubi Jinchuriki, the Hokage's grandson and the Uchiha clan heir was high profile. However, Hiruzen was not a neutral observer. That S-class was there for a completely different reason. His grandson was a lunatic, and proud of it. Hokage-sama I am ready for my mission, the Sandame raised his eyes to meet the fourteen-year-old's gaze. He could still remember when she came into ANBU. She was drafted in because of her sensing skills, and she excelled in the Black Ops unit. After what happened with Orochimaru two years ago, she had become one of his most trusted ANBU agents. She was calm, caring, loyal and driven. But as talented as she is, he still felt uneasy about sending her with his grandson for two years. Yugao-chan you read the files on your escorts. What is your assessment? asked Hiruzen Yugao was confused by the question. It was like the Hokage was concerned about something. She may not be psyched about leaving ANBU. Her rating was close to earning her a spot on Kakashi Senpai's team after all. However, that did not mean she would slack in her duties. Perhaps the third just wanted to know what she thinks of her party. Aside from the incident last year, all three boys seemed to be quite behaved. The incident with the civilian was justified for their friend. It shows that they are willing to fight for each other, and that is a good trait. They seem like normal boys Hokage-sama. Oh boy, thought Hiruzen Sasuke may be a normal boy but his friends are not. He knew how loud and stubborn Naruto can get. Throw that in with his crazy grandson and they were a recipe for migraines. If he told Yugao that right now, she would not fully understand his concern. It wasn't that he didn't trust her to keep them safe from attacks. He was not sure she would be able to maintain her sanity along the way. Sasuke was their best friend, as normal as Sasuke looked the boy was close to insanity. Sasuke of course doesn't know it yet but all he needed at this point was a push. The last thing I need is one of my most promising, trusted ANBU losing her sanity. The missions the ANBU take on are tough as it is, no one will want a mentally unstable person for a teammate although even that is relative in a black ops unit. I suppose I can just give her a heads up, so she can be prepared. Yugao chan during this trip, no matter what happens, just hang in there, Yugao titled her head in confusion. What was the Sandane talking about? Surely the boys were not that bad. Or was there an attack that she needed to be prepared for? The Hokage refused to answer her questions. Apparently, it was something that she would have to experience herself. Meanwhile at the Kanoha gates, finally you two show up, said Naruto, let me guess you didn't want to disturb your beauty sleep, Sasuke scoffed, yeah right Dobe, yeah Naruto everyone knows that beauty sleep can't be disturbed, Sasuke and Naruto turned to Dante with confused expressions on their faces. What does that comment have to do with what he said, asked Sasuke Dante frowned, how am I supposed to know? Sasuke took a deep breath. He wasn't going to let Dante frustrate him this early in the morning. It was too early to deal with his level of craziness. Turning to Naruto, Hey Dobe I hope you didn't leave anything behind. Just before Naruto answered Dante screamed. It seemed like he had forgotten something important. Sasuke, mistakenly, asked what it was, My precious, said Dante, I have lost my precious, one it wasn't the comment that had Sasuke and Naruto gaping. It was the voice that Dante used, it was freaking them out. 
it sounded like some kind of creepy creature. Dante didn't stop there, he turned to face them with a creepy hurt look in his eyes. Have you seen my precious? asked Dante. Dante is a bad boy. He lost precious. Master will not be pleased. On the inside Dante was laughing his ass off. The terrified look on his friends' faces was so worth it. He had been dying to use that voice on someone for so long now. Of course he couldn't do anything halfway. Bending his body in that way he approached Naruto, blonde boy looks like he can help Dante find his precious. Will blonde boy help? Dante will ask blonde boy, Naruto was too stunned to even react. Sasuke was not any better. The scene was so disturbing, yet they couldn't look away. Just then someone landed in front of them and Dante snapped back to normal, within a spilt second. Hello my name is Yuzuki Yugao and I will be your escort, it is such a pleasure to meet you Yuzuki-san. I am Sarutobi Dante, these are my friends Uchiha Sasuke and Uzumaki Naruto, his tone was so respectful and well-mannered. Sasuke and Naruto were left shocked. Dante of course had no choice but to take advantage of this situation. No seriously, he had no other choice. I'm sorry they get so weird in the presence of a beautiful girl. It's like their brain goes to sleep. Please, shall we? I am most certain that they will catch up to us. However, it would be rude to keep you waiting till then. They watched Dante lead Yugo away like some royal from the palace. The way he talked with her, it was so damn classy. What the hell just happened, Dadabeo? asked Naruto, I think Dante just played us. Now our escort is going to think we are the weirdos and he is the normal one. Said Sasuke, but he's the weirdo, Sasuke glared, you're both weirdos as far as I am concerned, Naruto growled, what did you say, team? Sasuke scoffed and took off after Dante, with Naruto yelling at him the whole way. Sometimes he wished he could take his friends to a psyche ward. But they would probably just drive their caretakers crazy, and then he would be back to square one. I'm beginning to get tired of wishing for normal friends thought Sasuke he wasn't even going to try to save his escort. She would learn from experience just who the normal person in this party is. Perhaps he could even find a way to sick Naruto on her, that way they would leave him alone for a while. She is fresh meat after all. Hey Dobe, Naruto stopped his yelling at Sasuke's serious tone. What? You do know that our escort is going to think that Dante is the good one among us. If Dante can get her on his side then. Naruto's eyes widened. The blonde wasn't about to let that happen. If anyone was getting into Yugao's good graces it was going to be him. The last thing he needed was someone giving Dante full permission to do what he wants. They would never make it home. Not to mention Yugao was an ANBU agent, Dante learning stealth would be the end of the world. Jerk, get back here to Bayo. Sasuke smiled when Naruto dashed ahead of him. He knew he should feel bad about putting Yugao in the middle of those two, but better her than him. Perhaps now he could have some peace of mind. Not to mention, watching his friends drive someone else crazy was going to be entertaining. Don't mind him Yugane-chan. He's just pretending to be nice, he's actually crazy. Dante gasped in shock. He turned to Yugao in apology, I am so sorry Yuzuki-san. This is my fault. I seem to have forgotten to give him his pills this morning. I promise you, he is not always like this, Naruto's face turned red from rage. You could practically feel the anger rolling off of him in waves. What did you just say, you crazy mophead jerk? Dante shook his head in pity. It's okay Uzumaki-kun. This is a safe place. I am so sorry for this disturbance Yuzuki-san. Sasuke could feel the smirk spreading across his face. Yes this was going to be very entertaining indeed. The look on Yugao's face was so funny. At this point, Sasuke's only problem was wishing he had popcorn with him as they jumped through trees. This scene was gold, Naruto was trying so hard not to commit murder, Dante was trying not to lose his composure, 
Yu Gao had no idea what was going on. It took everything in him not to drop in laughter when this happened, you better watch your mouth jerk and oh one is buying your ACTUASS jerk Uzumaki kun that is not an actual word, also please don't cuss in front of a lady. Who died and gave you manners? Um, Yu Gao didn't even know what to say. Their dynamic was not what she expected at all. At first she thought they had the typical party dynamic, calm, gentle, and wild card. That was the typical team dynamic that she knew of. However, it appears that this team did not follow that dynamic at all. She could see Sasuke struggling not to laugh behind her. Naruto was struggling not to kill the Hokage's grandson. Dante, who she thought was a gentleman, was purposely antagonizing his friend. Yugao chan during this trip, no matter what happens, just hang in there, I guess this must be what the Sandame was trying to tell me. I didn't see this one coming. How am I supposed to handle this? Most teams have a port of call that a superior can use to reach the other members. Right now, I'm not sure this team has that. Well maybe I can help them calm down. I may not know much about kids but they shouldn't be fighting this much. Perhaps we can try to get along, asked Yugao, now see what you did Naruto, said Dante, she thinks we are crazy, Naruto deadpanned, you are crazy, well duh, declared Dante, but she wasn't supposed to think that, Yugao was lost. That wasn't what she was expecting. Dante had just admitted to being crazy and Naruto was going along with it. Just what is going on here? You'll get used to it, she turned to face Sasuke, who was now jumping in pace with her, he had an understanding look on his face. As she looked ahead of her, she saw Dante and Naruto getting into yet another argument. She would get used to this? Are you used to it? asked Yugao Sasuke smirked, that is something you will have to find out for yourself, ah look Sasuchan is flirting with our hot escort, said Dante, isn't that cute? It is cute, said Naruto Sasuke sighed as he watched his friends make kissy faces. At this point, he had learned how to monitor what he got angry at. He knew his best friends, they want him to get emotional. Unfortunately for them he refused to crack. However, Sasuke was forgetting just what happens when you combine Dante's craziness with Naruto's stubbornness. They always hit their mark, always. Dante adopted a shocked look, his hand on his heart, oh my gosh, Naruto I think Sasuchan is ignoring us. My mother told me that when a boy falls in love he leaves his friends behind. Does this mean that Sasuchan is in love? Naruto started crying anime tears. You could feel the hurt in his voice. Our little duck butt is growing up so fast. He's already hitting on older women. Soon he will start using big boy pants. Dante and Naruto hugged each other with tears running down their faces. Oh life! You have taken our little boy too soon, said Dante, he had so much potential and now he will be a family man, duck but will learn how to change diapers for the first time in his life. Oh the experience will be as exciting as the first. That was it. Flames grew hot and large behind Sasuke's demon form. Yugao sweat dropped as she watched Sasuke pound his friends. This is really far from what she expected. Oh well, whatever the case may be, they were her party. So she was not going to leave just because they were a bit strange. Abandoning a task halfway wasn't in her genes and it won't start now. When the fight was over she decided to ask some questions, so what is the plan for the next two years, asked Yugao Sasuke and Naruto turned to look at Dante. He was the one who proposed this. Whole thing. So he should have a play for them to follow. The sanity of whatever the play is, well that will be debatable. Dante noticed that everyone was now staring at him. Blinking in confusion, he titled his head, Is there something on my face? Everyone face planted, Sasuke glared at his friend, What is the plan for the next two years? Maintaining his expression, he asked, Oh I was supposed to come up with a plan? Yugao could practically see Sasuke's patience cracking. She did not want another fight on her hands, perhaps there was a better approach to this. She knew that couldn't depend on Naruto to stop the fight, 
apparently he wanted to see Sasuke crack. Dante-san. Please call me Dante Yuzuki-san, um okay Dante perhaps you could share any ideas you have with us, is that okay? You have very pretty eyes you know that? Answer the dang question, ordered Sasuke Dante gasped, Sasuke are you saying that your crush's eyes aren't pretty? Sasuke knew from experience, insulting a Kunoichi's looks was suicide. But he also knew that Dante was enjoying being the center of attention. Taking a deep breath, he forced himself to relax. She is beautiful but you need to answer the question, gritted Sasuke, so you do think she is beautiful, said Naruto, does that mean you also like her, like her? Or is she not your type? Sasuke could feel his teeth cracking from how hard he was grinding them. His friends were only interested in getting him in trouble with an ANBU agent. They were deliberating asking questions to put him in a tight spot. How I feel about her is irrelevant right now, said Sasuke, will you answer the question? Hmm say please, sang Dante, I don't think that that is necessary Dante, said Yugao, I will also like to know what your thoughts are. Dante pouted when he heard that, Mao you're no fun Yuzuki-san. Fine, fine I suppose we can talk about my plan for the next few months at the next rest stop, Sasuke was so relieved when he heard that. As they took off, he matched pace with Yugao. Thank you. I am sorry about them. They can be so frustrating sometimes. Yugao giggled a bit, you looked so ready to pop a blood vessel, Sasuke smiled, yeah well it won't be the first time or the last knowing those two. For what it's worth, you don't seem all that annoyed that they are your friends, well they may drive me bat crazy, but I know that they always have my back when it counts. So you are loyal to each other, said Yugao, yeah we are, I see, said Yugao, did you really mean what you said earlier? Sasuke frowned, of course I did, Yugao smiled, thank you, the comment and the smile made Sasuke blush a bit, you're welcome, up ahead Naruto and Dante were gossiping with each other, you don't think that Sasuke actually likes her, do you? asked Naruto, how should I know? They sure look chummy with each other though. Naruto shook his head. And he says we're crazy. Yugao Nechan is way older than us Tabeo. Well Yugao knows that she is older than us. So even if Sasuke develops a crush on her I don't think she would like him in that way, did you not see the way she smiled at him, asked Naruto, let's just wait and see, said Dante, honestly I had no issue with Sasuke and Sakura getting together. Is it possible that this is one of the ripples my coming here caused? Nah that's not possible, Sasuke is going to get with Sakura and no one else. Or is he? Hmm I'm kinda interested to see where this goes. A few hours later the group had reached their rest spot, a small clearing by a stream. They sat down to relax and hear Dante's plan. If your guess is, the plan was bloody retarded, you would be very correct. Where do you come up with this stuff, asked Sasuke, no I genuinely want to know. Do you attend a brainstorming session in the asylum? Or is there a guidebook to crazy town I don't know about? Don't be silly Sasuke, said Dante, every crazy person draws their ideas from the same place, the voices in our heads. Sheesh I thought you knew that. I don't hear voices in my head, moaned Naruto, that's because you haven't attained my level of crazy yet Naruto, Naruto nodded, yes that must be why. I need to increase my level of craziness to Bayo, Dante gave him a thumbs up, give it your best Naruto, Naruto returned the gesture, you got it Dante, Sasuke felt like crying. No I am being serious he literally felt like crying right now. He knew that Dante had lost it, but he could feel his own sanity slipping too. That is why he felt like crying, his mind was becoming as loony as his friends. Yugao however was still trying to process what she just heard, Dante surely there is no logical reason that supports this, there is, said a depressed Sasuke, there always is, and he always gets results. Ma, ma Sasuke, you say it like all my plans are crazy. Am I lying? Dante smirked, you have to ask. Yugao was still confused. Perhaps it was because she didn't know Dante as long as Naruto and Sasuke did. But surely there couldn't be a logical reason behind what he was suggesting they spend the six months learning. 
Dante, you want your friends to learn how to bounce off the ground, after jumping off a cliff. Where is the logic in that? I am so glad that you asked Yuzuki-san, said Dante, we are going to be spending some time in Coral. It's one of the six cities in Fire Country, everywhere else is either a community or a town. I know this. Those cities are quite large and I know that Coral is known for its waterfalls and cliffside views. But what does that have to do with this? If we can learn how to use our chakra as a buffer, can you imagine the applications of a skill like that in a fight? The possibilities are endless. First we learn how to bounce off the water at the waterfall. Then we can move on to the rock-hard floor. You are free to join us if you choose to. Of course we will also keep up on our studies and keep practicing our skills but this will be our main focus. Part of me is afraid to ask, but what kind of training have you three done, asked Yugao, oh well that's easy, said Naruto, tree walking, water walking, leaf balancing, lava walking, lava submergence, climbing a mountain with one hand and twenty tons tied to our feet. The first three Yugao didn't have a problem with. It was the ones that followed that helped her understand that Dante and Naruto were truly insane. She turned on her sensory abilities to check their chakra capacity, it was five times what kids their age have. Even Naruto who should have issues controlling his chakra, his pathways were as calm as his friends. If it continued then the blonde would be well suited to master his bija chakra. Yash enough resting, let's go everyone, said Dante, we have cliffs to jump off, six months later Naruto was sitting on his favorite waterfall. He couldn't believe how fast time flies when you're having fun. When they arrived in Coral they immediately fell in love with the scenery. The way the people treated them was a big bonus too. While Coral knew about the clans and the happenings in Kanoha they treated them like any other person. It took Dante a while to get used to people not bowing to his every whim. Sasuke on the other hand loved it here and so did he. No one treated them like scum, they just accepted them, as they are. So it was easy for Naruto to go to the playground and be a normal child. He laughed when he remembered how Sasuke said he could feel his sanity coming back to him. Training was hard. However, it was also fun. Naruto couldn't count the number of water games that they played, even though Dante always cheated. Even Yuganei-chan had joined in on a few of those games. Naruto knew that the moment they mastered this new exercise they would have to leave, it made him sad. But it also made him want to do all he could while he could. Coral was a place he would never forget. It helped him renew his commitment to become Hokage. Now he didn't want to become Hokage just to protect Kanoha but all of Fire Country as well. Below him Sasuke and Dante were getting some last-minute sparring done. Dante was right about the possibilities the exercise gave them. Now that they had mastered it, they could use it their taijutsu training. They can create a buffer against physical attacks and use that same buffer to increase the impact of their own. Right now they still had trouble switching between them the amount of chakra that they exuded was also a problem. But that was nothing more training won't solve. Although, Yugao told them that solving the chakra problem would not be an easy task. In a shinobi fight, chakra was like a beacon. Anyone with decent skill can easily read their movements after a couple tries and that would negate their advantage. Speaking of, Naruto looked at Dante. Sometimes he felt that Dante was preparing them for a big fight. The way he pushed them to improve. Felt different somehow. He had no doubt that Dante loved him and Sasuke, but sometimes Naruto saw fear in his eyes. It was like he knew something dangerous was coming their way and he was trying to prepare them for it. That was part of the reason he trained as hard as he could, if it would make his friend sleep easier he would do anything. Besides the stronger he got, the better equipped he would be to protect his friends. My friends huh, thought Naruto there was a time he would never thought he would have friends who cared about him. Yet now he had two best friends, two surrogate mothers, and one big sister. It made him really happy. And if he had to go to hell and back to keep them safe then that is exactly what he would do. 
Naruto swore he would protect his friends no matter what. They saved from him from his hell and he will make sure that he made them proud. With that thought in mind Naruto jumped back down. Dante and Sasuke had rounded up their fight so it was time to go. On the road Yugao smiled as she watched the boys chatting happily. The past six months were some of the best she ever had. Secretly she had been practicing the chakra control techniques that the boys told her about. It was grueling she could admit but it was worth it. She had not mastered all of them just yet due to her small reserves but she was getting better. Her chakra reserves had practically tripled in the past six months and so had her control. The only exercise she had not yet mastered was the cliff jumping exercise, seeing as she didn't want anyone to know. She could see what Sasuke sees in them. Dante and Naruto may drive her crazy but they are very fun to be around. She would never forget the day the boys had attempted to go fishing in one of the lakes in the city. It was a disaster of a day but looking back now it brought a smile to her face. Flashback, arg what are we even doing here Tobeo? asked Naruto, I'd rather read a book, we are here to learn the art of patience whiskers, that's what you're for. I came here to relax and get away from you, said Sasuke, Mao you're so cold Sasuchan but I know it is because you love me, Sasuke could feel his patience fading. He had planned to take an easy day, as a reward for dealing with these two. But of course when Dante heard that he was going fishing he couldn't resist coming with him. He loved his friends but sometimes he needed his space to be him. It was like Dante had something against personal space. He decided to just ignore them both. Just then he felt something tug at his pole, hey team got a bite, said Naruto, reel it in Sasuchan, yeah you can do it, don't give up, shut up, shouted Sasuke taking a deep breath, he reeled the fish in. It was a medium-sized catch, which he promptly threw back in. He didn't come to fish to eat, he just wanted to relax. But of course his friends turned the whole thing into a competition. Dante had a lot more luck than Naruto thanks to his use of water. Chakra Naruto of course couldn't take his loss calmly so he struggled to keep up with Dante's tally. Ah, uh, I guess the fish just don't like you, said Dante the comment was the straw that broke the camel's back. Naruto formed one hand sign and the next thing Sasuke heard was, wind style, great breakthrough, the lake was small so Naruto's jutsu caused the water to explode upwards, the fish along with. Sasuke watched as his friends scrambled to catch as many fishes as they could before the water receded. It was chaos after that, the lake was destroyed all because of competitive friends. They knew that they had crossed a line though so they apologized to Sasuke for their behavior and promised that they would let him have his free time every once in a while. Flashback end they didn't know that she had seen the whole thing go down though. She was so sure that Sasuke would be furious with them. But while he was reluctant at first, he eventually forgave them for it. The experience had even brought them closer together, it was good to watch. So all in all she had had fun the past six months. She was actually looking forward to the rest of the trip. Hey Yugao Nechan what are you thinking about? Yugao snapped out of her thoughts. She noticed that Sasuke and Dante were also waiting for her reply. The concern in their eyes is what made her feel happy. She smiled, I'm fine I was just thinking that's all, good thoughts, asked Dante, how is that any of your business, asked Sasuke, ma, ma they were good thoughts Dante, Dante stuck out his tongue at Sasuke. Yugao giggled, so Dante what is next? Dante deadpanned, why are you people always asking me? We trust your judgment, said Yugao she replied quickly because if she let Sasuke or Naruto reply then things would become troublesome. Also she was interested in what the Hokage's grandson had planned for them. Well since you put it that way, said Dante, I was thinking that we can go to Lindar's and take it easy for a while, Sasuke was stunned, so you have no crazy, suicidal training for us do? Dante laughed, well I do some normal training methods, but I figured we should focus on practice and relaxing instead, are you sure that you're Saratobi Dante? asked Naruto, I thought you hated being normal or something, Dante looked abashed. Come on even I know that too much crazy is just plain crazy. 
And I hate being just plain crazy I like being specially crazy, Sasuke couldn't believe what he was hearing. If he didn't trust Yugao's skills he would have suspected that this Dante was a fake. But the more he thought about it, the more it made sense. The only thing Dante hated more than normal was being boxed into any specific mold. He was always looking for new ways to do things. Well Sasuke wasn't going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Neither was Naruto, so what will we be doing in Lindars, Tibeo? Well unlike Koro Lindars is known for its caves and metal, said Dante, they own. The market on forgery, from Kunai all the way to Claymores. He's right, said Yugao, I haven't been to Lindars before but apparently you will find more blacksmith shops than houses in that city. Okay so what are we going to be doing there, asked Sasuke, I was thinking that we could use the dark caves to our advantage. I've been playing with the idea for a while now actually but I didn't really look into it. Sasuke sighed, why do you have to be so dramatic all the time? Just tell us the play already, Naruto playfully slapped Sasuke's arm. Oh lighten up team, if you do I will buy you a cookie, I detest cookies, ma, ma how about we just listen, Yugao couldn't count the number of times she had had to step in to prevent a fight. It got tiresome real fast. Of course she couldn't stop every fight, some she actually let happen out of tiredness. Dante smirked, yes listen up minions, oh no, thought Yugao, who are you calling minions jerk slash Dante? Dante tilted his head in confusion, how did you know that I was calling you minions? Sasuke growled, because we are the only ones here dummy, and how do you know that? asked Dante, ma, Dante can we please try to move this along? We are burning daylight, Dante pouted, you never let me have any fun Yuzuki-san, so what's your idea? asked Yugao, well it is more of a concept. I was wondering if it is possible to sense the environment around us, using vibrations, wait I don't understand what you are talking about Tabeo, if you're surprised please raise your hand, said Sasuke, oh look no one did, you're pushing it team, gritted Naruto Dante laughed, well he's not wrong. Naruto you know how some animals are blind yet they can see the world around them? Yeah I have always wondered how they do that, some use water pressure waves, everything emits a wave. Stated Yugao, I know of an animal that can use those waves to determine everything around him, exactly and some use the vibrations in the earth to do the same thing, said Dante, so you want us to tap into those vibrations and waves, using chakra, said Sasuke, is that even possible? Dante shrugged, who knows. I'm not sure that it is possible, said Yugao, sensory ability is less of forcing your chakra out than letting the chakra that's out in, what does that mean? asked Naruto, everything around us generates chakra, no matter what how small it is, explained Yugao, because all that chakra is connected to each other, all a sensor has to do is connect to it. Our level of skill is determined by how much information we can process. That's why I am not sure if waves and vibrations can be used as a substitute. Well we won't know until we try right, said Naruto, if the animals can do it then I'm sure we can too, Dante nodded, yeah besides it's not like we haven't done crazier things, Sasuke sighed, well we should get going then, ah uh, why are so glum Sasuchan? asked Dante Sasuke just ignored him and raced. Forward. Dante of course followed after with Naruto in tow. Yugao just sighed as she took off after them. Sometimes she felt less of a guard and more of a diplomat. Oh well. Lindar's the city was everything that Dante thought it would be. The city was very different from Coral's serene environment. It had this energy, this buzz that Coral didn't have. However, as they walked through the city streets Dante couldn't help but feel that something was amiss. In every city there are three types of people, citizens, visitors, and tourists. The tourists admire the city but don't stay longer than a week since they have no connections there. The visitors have some connection with the city, personal or otherwise. So they could stay as long as a year depending on how they were treated. Then there are the citizens, the ones that won't leave even if the city was set ablaze. They may have misgivings but they won't leave unless they absolutely had to, they have strong ties to the city. So if you want to know what the ins and outs in a city are, you check the visitors. The tourists won't know Jack and no citizen is going to tell you anything sensitive. 
The visitors however are the perfect targets for information gathering. That is what was amiss in Lindars. Dante couldn't find a single visitor. Tourists tend to stick out like neon lights, they didn't really know where they're going and they are curious about everything, like children. The citizens know where they are going and they know everyone else. They also watched to make sure that the tourists didn't harm their city, they were the adults. The visitors were the teenagers in this picture. They stuck to the middle ground, they don't head to the danger zones but they don't care about staying in the obvious places. Teenagers like to have special places to hang out, places outside the adults' viewpoint. But throughout their walk, Dante couldn't detect anyone behaving like a teenager, if there were no teens then there was a problem. Is everything okay Dante, asked Yugao, you're being uncharacteristically quiet, something is wrong here, said Dante, this city is probably not as safe as we think, what makes you say that Tabeo, asked Naruto, everyone looks like they're getting along just fine, Sasuke knew Dante enough to know that he won't make a statement like that without being sure. The question is, what was Dante seeing that he wasn't? Sasuke took his time to follow Dante's line of sight and it didn't take him long to draw the same conclusions. Yugao was impressed. She had known what was wrong the second they entered the city thanks to her ANBU training but Dante wasn't ANBU. Also judging from Sasuke's body language, he seems like he had noticed it too. Naruto on the other hand was still clueless, which was a good thing at this point. If he knew then she was certain the blonde would walk up to someone and ask. They didn't need that kind of attention right now. I'm surprised you noticed it Dante. Dante scratched his cheek. Well I am pretty awesome, the question is what happened, said Sasuke, then we can decide if we want to stick around or not, Naruto was starting to get annoyed. His friends knew something and they weren't telling him about it. He was a hair trigger away from blowing his fuse. If something was going on in the city then he wanted to know about it. However instead of telling him what was going on, his friends just kept discussing it among themselves. Ditching the city on the same day we came in would raise suspicion, said Yugao, but you're right about finding out what is going on. It won't be easy though considering, considering what Tabeo, screamed Naruto everybody turned to give him the, I can't believe you just did that, look. Naruto however was way past caring he wanted to know what was going on. Crossing his arms he glared at them with the order clear in his eyes, I am not moving until you talk. Dante sighed, we can't explain it to you here, exactly Dobe, so do you think that you can be quiet for now? Is that even a possibility for your loud mouth? asked Sasuke Naruto growled, what? Naruto-kun, said Yugao, I promise that I will explain everything when we get somewhere safe. Until then please just play along for now, okay? Naruto huffed but nodded. They all let out a breath, that would have been bad. Luckily they were able to spot a clock tower ahead. It would give them a good viewpoint of the city and it was high enough so no one will be able to eavesdrop on their conversation. Once they got there they explained the situation to Naruto, wait so just because a section of the social chain is missing, you think that the city isn't safe? That is ridiculous I saw tons of happy families and people down there, Dante groaned, this is one of the biggest cities in fire country Naruto. The amount of money that Lindars generates in a year is part of the reason why. Now while our shinobi force is centered in Konoha, the civilians in fire country are always coming here. It is illogical as to why entire social class is missing in a city as big and profitable as this, Naruto thought about it for a second. He knew that Sasuke and Dante were a lot more perceptive than him, and if Yugao was agreeing with them then it had to be legit. But if Lindars was in trouble like they were saying then he had one more question, why haven't they contacted Konoha for help? ANBU missions are the only classified missions. So if they request help with a problem it is very possible that word of that problem will get out. Said Yugao, yeah not only will Lindars be considered unsafe, the city's reputation will become tainted for good, said Sasuke, the mayor probably felt losing his a part of his social class would be better than losing his whole city. Then we have to help them to bail. I'm not about to leave them to deal with this on their own, Dante raised an eyebrow in surprise, did you not hear a word of what we 
said. Dobe even if we want to help them we need information, information that they won't just hand over to you. I am not giving up on an entire city, gritted Naruto, okay Hiro-kun, said Dante, what do you suggest we do? Auntie Mira is always saying how smart you and team are, also Yugane-chan is an ANBU agent don't you dare tell me that you don't have a plan, Sasuke sighed in frustration, you do realize that this is going to be dangerous right? If we mess up this entire city we'll pay for it, then we won't fail Databeo, declared Naruto Dante couldn't help but laugh. Well there goes their vacation time. Ah uh, hell he wasn't built for taking a vacation anyway. It was time to bust some heads. Yugao felt proud of Naruto's determination. The blonde was incapable of turning his back on anyone he felt needed help. It is one of the things that she admired most about him. However, Naruto's will aside, they needed a plan. Thankfully it seemed like Sasuke had one. Well this city is pretty big, I'm pretty sure we can find someone who can tell us what's going on, Yash then let's go find them, wait loser, said Sasuke, wait for what? You need to stay here with Yugao, eh? He's right Naruto, said Dante, the place that Sasuke is talking about. You will make our life harder if you come, Yugao had an idea of the kind of place that they were talking. As their guard she couldn't just let them go there alone. Sasuke knew what she was going to say so he beat her to the punch. Yugao you know that there is only one way you can flow in that kind of crowd, damn it, thought Yugao she knew that Sasuke was right. Her shinobi skills aside, she was still a 14-year-old girl. There is no way she would be left alone, of course that will put more pressure on them. Normally that won't be a problem but they had to do this covertly. She had no choice, she just had to trust that the boys will be fine on their own. Don't worry Yuzuki-san, said Dante, if we get into trouble we can always just raise hell, Yugao smiled. She knew that Dante was just trying to reassure her but she didn't like this plan. However, she didn't exactly have a choice in the matter. She gave both Sasuke and Dante her most serious gaze, promise me that you will make it back here, no matter what, we promise, said Sasuke, yeah who else is going to torment Naruto, said Dante, it's okay Yugane-chan they may be complete bastards but they're pretty strong, Dante wiped a tear from his eye, oh Naruto I knew you loved me, Sasuke didn't have time for this. So he grabbed Dante's shirt and dragged him along. Of course Dante just had to make a comment about it. Sasuchan I prefer if you bought me dinner first, shut up, so where are they going? asked Naruto Yugao sighed, they are going to find the Lindars underground circle, Lindars has an underground circle. Every place has one Naruto, said Yugao, that's where they will get the information that they're looking for. Yugao Nechan what is the underground made of? Bandits, rapists, psychopaths, and those are just the front. Just some people with different opinions on life Naruto, with Sasuke and Dante, so how are we supposed to find the underground? How am I supposed to know? asked Sasuke, well it was your idea, did you tell me to come up with a location? Dante deadpanned, are you copying me right now? Sasuke dodged the question. Our best entry point would be to head to the casinos, Dante stared at Sasuke for a full moment before he decided to let it go. For now. You do remember that we are six-year-olds right? No one is going to believe us if we give them the, my dad is inside, routine, that's why we will buy our way in, hmm I wonder what your mom will says when she sees an invoice from a gambling den, Sasuke stiffened, my mother won't see anything. The accountant keeps all paper traces confidential, you sure about that Sasuchan, can we just focus here, said Sasuke, there is a casino. It's huge so it should have some contacts in Lindar's underground, judging from the amount of people waiting in line, it's popular too, said Dante, alright let's do this, when the bouncers saw them coming they laughed. Seeing two kids cut in line like they were bosses was hilarious. It was definitely a first in Lindar's, so even the adults waiting in line didn't get annoyed. When they reached the end everyone waited to see what kind of line they would use. We want to buy your casino, said Dante, oh you want to buy this casino? Asked bouncer one bouncer two laughed, sorry brats this casino is a lot more expensive than your allowance, Dante smirked, oh I'm so sorry we haven't introduced ourselves yet. 
How rude of us, Sasuke maintained his cold facade, my name is Uchiha Sasuke and this is Saratobi Dante, Dante waved happily, hi, there is no way that that is possible, said Bouncer 1, do you want to risk being wrong, asked Sasuke, oh please send us away, said Dante, it would be so cool to have our accountants and guards come with us to prove we are who we say we are. Tell me, what is your bikini size? I am asking so that we can your proper measurements for a photo shoot in Kanoha Times. The bouncers stared at each other for a second. The confidence the boys were exuding, it practically made their case for them. If they sent the Hokage's grandson and the heir to a noble clan away, it will be their heads. They had no choice, they had to let the boys in to see the boss. She will decide whether they were genuine or not. They will have to take them through the secret entrance though. Regardless of whether they were telling the truth or not, they couldn't afford to allow the kids be seen by their clientele. Come with me, said Bouncer 1, yada thanks darling, said Dante, uh yeah sure, knock. Knock. Enter, Dante and Sasuke immediately took note of the three heavily armed guards in the office. The casino boss was a woman, short dark. Hair, icy onyx eyes and a figure to kill four. She was one badass lady. Dante liked it her already. Hey boss we have some people who want to talk to you, Eero stared at the people that her bouncer was referring to. Her bouncer had seen it fit to bring children into her office. As far as she was concerned, both this one and his partner had just earned themselves a slow death for this insolence. She gave the kids a once-over to see if they had potential, they were very clean kids. They would fetch a good price in the market so it wasn't a complete loss. Hi there, said Dante Iro didn't even bother answering the child. He was not important and she had better things to do. She signaled her guards to take all three of them. Well that was the plan, but instead she ended up with three unconscious bodyguards. Now the kids had her attention. It appears that her bouncers were not going to be replaced after all. She sent the last conscious man out of the room, my name is Iro and who might you two be? Well I'm Sarutobi Dante and this is Uchiha Sasuke, Dante had no problem throwing around their real names. Keeping their identity a secret would not help them deal with this issue. Besides it's not like there was anyone who could harm them here. Iro was surprised, to what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? We want some information, said Sasuke, I see, said Iro, that's too bad you see I don't really know much about this city, Dante smirked and wrote something down, handing the paper to her he said, would you know if we paid you, this much? Iro really liked where this was going. The figure was enticing and since they were just kids she could get them to increase the figure. Cleaning out the Sarutobi and Uchiha clan accounts would make her day. Reclining into her seat, she told the boys to seat down, so what is it that you want to know? Lindars is in trouble, said Sasuke, we want to know all about it, we would also like to know what time you get off, said Dante Iro smiled sweetly at Dante, I get off when you want me to, Sasuke resisted the urge to sigh. Of course Dante would try to get under a mob boss's skin. Why did he think his best friend would behave like a rational person? He just hoped that this meeting ended quickly. Then he will leave Dante to his devices, it wasn't like there was any real threat to them in this city. If you want know about this city's woes then I can point you in the right direction, Dante's entire body language changed. His smile turned cold, his eyes grew dark and his voice dropped low and chilled. It's adorable that you think you have a choice, said Dante, the only reason you casino is still standing is because we didn't want to waste our energy, Giro felt a chill run down her spine. The look on the kid's face was deadly, and after what she saw them do to her guards she decided to change tactics. Of course I suppose I could save you the time and just tell you myself, Dante. Reverted back to normal, well normal for him anyway. Thanks beautiful, you're the best, we've been having a string of bad luck lately. It started a few months ago. Lindars has a lot of caves surrounding the city and a large one running underneath it. So things like cave-ins happen every once in a while but no one dies. However a few months ago people started to get lost in the caves. 
Normally you should be able to find your way back to an easy route but they never did. At first we thought it was just another hazard of living in this city, but something changed. The bodies of the victims started turning up, their insides were sucked out, all that was left were skin and bones, literally. The mayor decided to quarantine the caves after we lost 40 people and we all thought it was over. But a couple weeks ago people started vanishing with no rhyme or reason. We don't know how the kidnappings are carried out, all we know is that 48 hours after a person goes missing they turn up dead. Where do they turn up, asked Sasuke, at the cave entrances is where we always find the bodies. People are beginning to think Lindars is haunted by a ghost. Kukukukuku you know what this means Sasuke, asked Dante, we get to solve a real-life mystery, fair warning, we hired a team of ANBU to take care of the problem before. We found their heads at the cave entrance with a warning, try this again and your children will be next, so no child has been lost yet, said Sasuke, no whoever they are, they only go after adults and the mayor wants to keep it that way. That is all I know about it, thanks beautiful, said Dante, don't worry we will solve this mystery. Clock Tower, you guys don't think we are dealing with an actual ghost, do you? asked Naruto, I still don't understand how you become a complete chicken when a ghost is involved, said Sasuke Naruto growled, team. Enough, ordered Yugao it wasn't the word that forced them into silence, it was the tone of her voice. This was no longer Yugao their friend, this was an ANBU agent and she wasn't messing around. She knew that there was no way to change their minds about pursuing this. But on her life she will make sure that they made it through. From this moment on, my word is law, said Yugao, I promise you I will get you through this, but the game stop now. Are we clear? Hi, they all chorused, good I will head over to the mayor's office and memorize the layout of the caves, said Yugao, you three will wait here for me to get back, as soon as she left, Dante turned to his friends in shock, I knew she was an ANBU agent, but that was awesome, yeah she looked so cool to Bayo, said Naruto, yash if she is going to give it her all then so will I, Sasuke turned to Dante, think you can behave until the mission is over? Of course I can but for every second that passes, my desire for craziness increases. So be prepared for a storm when this is over, Sasuke sighed, yeah sure, cave entrance you go knew that whoever they were going up against was a poison expert and a shinobi. After analyzing the layouts she discovered holes in the caves that ANBU agents were trained to exploit. So if they were all killed it means that the culprit knew it too. Also no one felt any tremors so a fight may not have broken out, that means that the team was taken out fast. Looking at her party she knew that they were strong enough to face just about anything but this was going to be a big challenge for them. Stay behind me and stay quiet, ordered Yugao, and do not let anything touch you, this place is probably covered in poison, understood, they all chorused when they passed the cave however they activated a proximity seal, the enemy already knows that they are coming. Yugao activated her sensory ability and she didn't like what she found. The entire cave system was linked together with chakra, while it told her where the culprit is, it also means that the culprit knows where they are. The only other good news was that she was able to guide her party past the traps layered throughout the cave, since they were linked to the chakra network. However halfway to their destination they all heard something crack. What was that? whispered Naruto Yugao shushed him. This was not the time for talking. According her senses, the parts of the caves that they are in are surrounded by puppets. While the puppeteer knew where they are, he didn't know their exact location thanks to the fact that she was scrambling it. The downside to this kind of controlled chakra system is that a sensor can send out pulses to disrupt the images received. The only way for the puppeteer to get their exact location would be to start a fight and that would ruin his element of surprise. Yugao's plan was to lead them to his location, an open space at the center of the caves. That will level the playing field between them. The puppeteer though it seemed had already guessed what their play is. He kept making noises at random intervals trying to force them to make a move. Thankfully the boys listened to her orders and didn't break formation or make a sound. Just bear with it a little longer you three thought Yugao, we are almost there, in a confrontation among shinobi, 
it only takes a single second to determine life or death. Yu Gao knew that if they maintain their composure it will increase their chances. However the wait before a fight isn't something the boys are experienced in. Yu Gao just hoped that they could resist their impulses until she gave the order to fight. As they drew closer to the center the noise level increased and it took everything the boys had not to say anything. Cave center unlike the dark cave, its center had blowtorches at the edges giving the room a dim lightning. Yu Gao was relieved that the boys had held their cool till now. From here on out it will be an all-out fight, something the ANBU in her would like to avoid. In the Black Ops unit, they are trained to strike their opponents down as quickly as possible. That's why they were so good at assassination jutsu. That was why they were crouching in a dark part of the cave, to find that opening. I must give you credit, said someone, no one has ever made it this far, Yugao put her finger to her lips to silence the boys. She upped her senses to try and find out where Puppeteer is. She could feel a low hum of chakra at the back of the cave, it felt like a dying human being. That was not him but it gave her some leverage. Whoever was there was dear to the puppeteer so if things go badly she knew where his weakness is. My guess is that you have a censor among your unit, said the puppeteer, are you here to avenge the ANBU that died? Bingo, Yugao found the puppeteer at the top of cave. She counted at least fifty puppets guarding him on every side, along with fifty surrounding the cave center. One wrong move and they were all goners. Right now they had two objectives, disable the puppets and take out their master. Sasuke archery skills are their best chance at taking out the puppeteer, but she had to get him positioned first and make sure to keep the puppets occupied. Her plan was to use the puppeteer's weakness against him. The party would spilt up into two groups, she would drop the jamming field around her and haul ass to the back of the cave drawing as many puppets as possible. While she serves as a distraction, the boys and a shadow clone of hers will sneak past and get to the top of the cave. Once there Sasuke will have one chance to take the puppeteer out or they were all in trouble. Quickly she created a clone and signaled the boys to follow the clone while she went somewhere else. She knew that Dante and Sasuke will be smart enough to figure out her play once the fighting starts. So all she did was instruct Sasuke to get his bow and arrows ready. Raising her palm she counted backwards from five, once her hand dropped they took off. As they ran up the walls the boys couldn't help but be impressed. Yugao was taking out puppets with such grace and power, yet her speed didn't suffer. With each breath came a sword stroke that took out a puppet and yet she didn't even look winded. The display really drove home why Yugao was one of the Hokage's best ANBU agents despite being so young. When they reached the top of the cave Yugao's clone pointed out what Sasuke's target is, it was the puppeteer. He was riding on the back of a very big puppet. Sasuke took a deep breath. He knew that this was the most venerable part of the plan, he couldn't afford to miss. Excitement bubbled in his chest as he took aim at the puppeteer who was 1,500 meters away from them. All his training was about to pay off, 1,500 meters was a cinch for him. His target was the puppeteer's hands, without usable hands the puppets will be reduced to toys. He drew two arrows and coated them with chakra. Aim, fire, thought Sasuke the arrows hit the puppeteer dead on. Sasuke. Could help but smirk as he watched all the puppets fall to the ground, useless. As soon as the puppeteer dropped to the ground he was surrounded. Yugao's clone dispersed having done its job. It appeared the puppeteer was a rogue Sunanin and when they looked in the direction Yugao ran in, they found a woman hooked up to a huge machine. It looked like it was pumping blood in her veins and taking blood out of it. Who are you? asked Yugao, are you going to kill me now that you've won? Yugao used her sword to pinch his neck. Her tone was hard and cold. Death comes in various forms. I will not ask again, my name is Iki Yaboku, why are you here? Yaboku gritted his teeth in anger. The arrows that robbed him use of his puppets also denied him the ability to make hand seals. He wasn't stupid enough to believe that he could take on an ANBU agent in his current state. 
He was at the mercy of a shinobi once again and he hated it. You wouldn't understand my conviction, Yugao's eyes narrowed. A kunai whizzed past the woman's cheek embedding itself in the wall behind her. That is not the answer to my question. Yaboku felt his hatred for shinobi go through the roof. The pain in his hands was nothing compared to the flame of vengeance in his heart. That is my wife, Iki Hayori. She has a disease that is constantly corrupting her. Her heart was infected by a virus so now if she doesn't get fresh blood every second she will die. I am trying to preserve my wife's life, at the expense of everyone else's, Suna is the reason why she is like this. They refuse to save her even though she got the disease on a mission for them. Shinobi don't care about anyone but themselves. I don't care how many people I have to sacrifice to protect my wife. I am devoted to her. We share a bond that you can never understand, everything I have done I have done for her. The more Naruto heard the angrier he became. That last statement was the last straw. The blonde drove his fist into Yaboku's face. He grabbed him by the shirt and pulled his face towards his. Stop screwing around. You are doing this for yourself, not for your wife, Yaboku lost it. How dare this brat say that to his face? What does a brat like you know about any of this? When you form a bond with someone you want to see them smiling. Bonds are never meant to harm people. If you really shared a bond with your wife you wouldn't put anyone else through your pain. If you care so much about her, why don't you hook yourself to that machine? Yaboku froze when he heard that. Naruto wasn't done though. You claim to love her and yet all you do is make people suffer in her name. You're throwing a tantrum about how bad the world is, but yet you are killing other people's loved ones. They deserve to know my pain. Bam! Naruto drove another punch into Yaboku's face. Naruto was enraged. This time he used both his hands to grab Yaboku by the shirt. What about your wife's pain? Do you think? That she would want people going through hell in her name? Did you ever ask her what she wants? Flashback Yaboku looked at his sleeping wife. Her condition was getting worse by the day. The Kazakage had still refused to devout resources to find a cure. He couldn't place the village on hold to save his wife. He could feel his hands clench hard. You look like I feel, his wife's quiet voice woke him from his thoughts. As he looked at her, he could still see her signature smile. It was something he always loved her for, no matter how bad life got his wife never lost her light. You're in no condition to be joking, Hayori laughed weakly, took you out of your mind though, Yaboku smiled, she was always thinking about other people. She didn't deserve this. Yaboku, yes. Do you want to know what will make me really happy? What? If you promise me that you will be happy, Hayori I. I love you and I'll always be with you. Just do me that one favor, okay? That was the last time his wife opened her eyes. Flashback and he was right. He had been lying to himself. The real reason was that he was not ready to say goodbye to Hayori yet. He was not strong enough to let her go and instead of honoring her wish he brought dishonor to her memory. But no more, he knew what he had to do. Let me go kid, Naruto left him alone. He watched him as he walked towards his wife. It appears that he finally understood what needed to be done. Naruto may not know the pain of losing someone he loved, but he knew that his friends will not want him to harm others in their name. When Yaboku got to his wife's side, he stared at her smiling face. I'm so sorry Hayori. I failed you but I know now what I have to do, he bent down and turned off the machine. As he watched her body relax in death, the smile remained as a sign. He felt himself return it. I promise that I will make you happy. So don't stop watching over me, okay? Dante couldn't believe what he was seeing. Naruto's legendary ability to turn Nemesis to friend was actually real. Over the next few minutes, Yaboku thanked them for stopping him and gave a special thank you to Naruto. He also promised to atone for his crimes, 
he would present himself to the mayor and take full responsibility for his actions. It was surreal. Yugao was just happy that the mission was a success. To be honest, she was exhausted. After they left the cave she apologized to the boys for being so hard on them. They waved it off, telling her how cool she looked in her ANBU mode. Sasuke didn't even know where to start from. When he walked into their room at the inn, this was not what he expected. Dante had completely destroyed their bathroom, and the entire inn's water system. The lunatic was just standing there with an abashed look on his face. Naruto had been in the room when the explosion went off, but even he couldn't explain how it happened. Sasuke took a deep breath and asked, How did this happen? It was an accident I swear, said Dante Yugao rushed into their room looking for what caused the explosion. What she found was a very wet Dante and a very angry Sasuke. Naruto it appeared didn't know what was going on. That means that Dante had done something to the inn's water system. The question is what? I asked how did this happen, gritted Sasuke Dante scratched his cheek with a bashful look on his face. Well I wanted to take a shower but the facet wasn't running fast enough. So I decided to create a tiny water dragon to take a bath Indiana. I thought it would be cool. Just imagine what it'll be like to take a shower inside a water dragon. But I sort of miscalculated how much water the system could handle, and well this happened. So you see I am a victim here too. How are you a victim, gritted Sasuke, you almost blew up the entire inn. Well how was I to know that the system couldn't handle it? It is not like they put up a warning sign saying, do not use water dragons in the bathroom, Naruto smiled, would that stop you from doing it? Dante smirked cheekily, you have to ask. Yugao sweat dropped as she watched Sasuke assault Dante. In the past six months, she had lost count of the number of accidents that Dante had caused. It was like since they weren't doing any crazy training, Dante decided to satiate his desire with destruction and mayhem. She will never forget the day the world combat champion visited Lindars. The WCC was not a shinobi tournament but the participants were tough enough to give most shinobi a run for their money. The current champion was a very big guy with a short fuse. He had visited the hot springs to relax and according to Sasuke Dante decided to talk to him. Flashback, what do you think that you're doing? asked Sasuke Dante blinked, I'm going to say hi to the big guy, Sasuke groaned. When normal people see a giant like Rig they avoided him at all costs. But of course Dante wanted to talk to him. Why? asked Sasuke, just why? Did you not see the way he looked at Yuzuki-san? asked Dante, he was totally leering at her, so he's a pervert, said Sasuke, what does that have to do with anything? Dante smirked, let's find out shall we? That makes no sense, Dante was already walking towards Rig. It wasn't that Sasuke didn't think he and Dante took bring the guy down. He just didn't see the point in starting a fight over something like that. Yugao was beautiful, guys will always leer at her. So as long as none of them crossed the line it wasn't Sasuke's business. This is going to end badly thought Sasuke he watched as Dante approached Rig. Seeing as he couldn't stop him, Sasuke walked to catch up. Even he didn't agree with this play he wasn't going to let Dante go at it alone. Dante walked up to Rig with mischief written all over his face. When Rig saw the brat he glared at him, what do you want? In the presence of over a dozen people, Dante made this comment, that thing between your legs, it's like a penis, only smaller. The jaw of everyone in the hot spring dropped. To say that Rig was enraged when he heard that would be a severe understatement. Everyone expected Rig to put the dark-haired kid in the hospital. However, the only one who wound up in the hospital was Rig, fighting Dante alone is one thing, but fighting both Dante and Sasuke was just plain unfair. Flashback end when she heard the story and saw what they did to Rig she was stunned. She felt flattered that Dante would go so far on her behalf but he really shouldn't have. Yugao had attempted to seat Dante down a couple months ago. You see Dante had decided to make fireworks to celebrate the Lindar's annual festival. 
The mayor was to supply him the casing while Dante handled the filling. Sasuke at the time was highly suspicious of Dante's generosity and his promise to blow them away. So they spied on the type of filling Dante planned on using. He planned to combine ethanol, acetone, pentane and diethyl malate 626-11-9. Flashback they were all stunned to the core. Naruto knew from his studies that the first three chemicals were highly flammable, yet Dante planned to combine them. The last chemical was used in some perfumes, not in fireworks. Hey you guys found my stash, Dante quipped, this is what you plan to fill the fireworks with, asked Sasuke they all held their breath, hoping and praying that they would be wrong. That somehow, someway Dante was not as crazy as this. They watched as he titled his head in confusion and asked, is that a bad thing? Sasuke couldn't even process what he just heard. The look on Dante's face was one of real confusion. It was like he didn't even know that his fireworks would incinerate the entire village. Even Naruto, who liked a good explosion, would not be this crazy. Yugao's mind was still resetting itself from fear, if they didn't come to check Dante would have given them all a fragrant death. While they were still trying to process this information, Dante was doing his very best not to break his composure. He wasn't actually going to pull a stunt like that, he wasn't that crazy. Although the Sparta in him was curious about what combining those chemicals would result in. So perhaps he was that crazy, but the insanity was worth it. The look on his friends' faces was so hilarious Dante almost lost his cool. Um is your silence a way of saying that this is not a bad idea? Asked Dante, and oh it's not you psychotic lunatic, screamed Sasuke Dante sighed, Sasachan those words mean the same thing. Shish you're supposed to be a north star for Naruto, what is that supposed to mean? Asked Naruto Dante shook his head in pity. You see what I mean, said Dante, now help me fill these fireworks, Sasuke, Naruto please excuse us, said Yugao, I would like to have a talk with Dante, good luck, groaned Sasuke when they left Yugao turned to Dante. She felt that perhaps if she could have a talk with Dante, it will help quell part of his insanity. But first she had some questions, Dante, started Yugao, you are as intelligent as Sasuke yet you seem hell-bent on following the path of insanity, why is that? Dante adopted his confused pose, I have no idea what you are talking about, Yugao took a deep breath. She didn't want to believe that Dante was completely crazy. There had to be a part of him that was still sane. If she could get to that part then maybe, just maybe it will quell Dante's insanity, before he drove them all crazy. Okay let's start with this, said Yugao, why did you try to use these chemicals? I wanted to see what happens, said Dante, okay so you were curious, said Yugao, curiosity is good but you do know what combining these chemicals will result in, right? Dante smirked. He knew exactly what Yugao was getting at. Part of him would love to drag this out and try to piss her off. However she had become a dear friend so he decided to go easy on her. There will be plenty of time to drive her crazy later on. That was one of his goals for this trip after all. You want to know if there is a part of me that is still sane, correct, Yugao wasn't even surprised. Yes that's what I want to know. The short answer is, yes, then why don't you listen to it? Simple, it's no fun, Yugao sweat dropped when she heard that. A part of her knew that that is what Dante's response would be. So you choose to be insane, because it is fun, well yeah, said Dante, I am free to be as crazy as I want because I know that Sasuke will keep me in check, and what happens when you drive Sasuke crazy? Dante smirked meaningfully, that's just the thing, Yugao's eyes narrowed, what thing? Sasuke is already insane, wait what? Asked Yugao, Sasuke is far from crazy, Dante cackled, Sasuke is insanely sane. His insanity is what keeps him sane, while my sanity is what makes me insane. Explain, well I have a firm, normal, foundation, so I can be as crazy as I want to be without going off the rails. Sasuke has never had a normal life, even before he met me. So he has a firm, crazy, foundation which allows him to be as normal as he wants without being average. I don't even want to know how you reached that conclusion, said Yugao, but what about Naruto? 
Dante smiled softly. Naruto doesn't operate from his head, he does so from the heart. He's a special kind of martyr. You see if a bad guy told Naruto to choose between the life of his friends and his own, he will make a third option, okay and what option is that? The idiot will choose to beat the stuffing out of whoever is stupid enough to give that kind of choice, flashback and she did not fully understand what Dante was saying then. However as she watched the scene in front of her, she knew that he was right. These boys were so special in so many ways. Honestly after spending a year with them, she has reached the point where she could finally see the kind of people they are. ANBU didn't open up a lot of possibilities for friendship but as she watched Sasuke scold Dante, with Naruto laughing in the background. She knew that these were her friends, and that made her laugh. My dearest friends are lunatics. The thought was so crazy it was hysterical. The boys paused what they were doing when they saw how hard Yugao was laughing. The laughter sounded very different from Yugao's usual laughs, this one had a touch of insanity in it. Dante smirked, ah I love it when a plan comes together, Sasuke glared at him. You shut up, said Sasuke, she's not crazy, your hearing is working isn't it? asked Naruto, I think Dante's plan worked, don't worry Sasuke, said Dante, I promise the crazy train can accommodate one more person, Yugao had stopped laughing at this point. She smiled at them, we need to get going you three, hi oh, said Dante, that's not an actual word, said Sasuke, every word that exists previously didn't exist, said Dante on the road, is it just me or were they too glad to see us leave, asked Dante, considering the amount of trouble you caused, I am not surprised, said Sasuke, Mao Sasuke I have half a mind to resent that, you don't have half a mind in the first place, Dante smirked, exactly so I won't resent that, so where to now, asked. Yugao they all stared at Dante for a play, only for him to look behind him. Is the new plan written somewhere there? I have a plan, said Naruto there was a non-vocal countdown before Sasuke and Dante dropped laughing so hard their sides hurt. Yugao refused to laugh out of compassion for Naruto. Naruto however did not like their unspoken comment. Yugao decided to try to get the situation under control. Guy I think that Naruto is being serious, wait what, asked Sasuke, you're being serious? Yes. Well I'll be, said Dante, there really is a first time for everything, what is that supposed to mean, asked Naruto, ma, ma Naruto calm down, said Yugao, why don't you just tell us your play? Naruto took a deep breath. Taft is one of the six big cities, interrupted Dante, what about it? Would you let me finish? gritted Naruto, sorry whiskers I'm not used to you having a play, Sasuke smirked, probably because it has never happened before, can we please just let him finish please, asked Yugao, Mao you're no fun, moaned Dante, fine let's hear the plan whiskers, Naruto sighed, after five months of training we finally know that it's possible to be a sensor via the vibrations in the ground, yeah dobe, said Sasuke, but we are barely able to monitor a few feet around us, and the Chakra cost alone makes it useless, hey, said an indignant Dante, the chakra beacon worked, all we need to do is master it. Exactly, said Naruto, so I was thinking, why stop at chakra beacons? Why don't we find a way to merge the chakra buffer and beacon together? Those techniques are two very separate things Naruto, said Yugao, the buffer creates a field of chakra around the body. While the beacon creates a field outside it, then there is the chakra cost and the amount of control that you would need to even try something like that, said Sasuke, yeah, but it would be awesome though, said Dante Naruto smirked, well I have a plan on how to do that. And if we can master it, it'll make mastering the buffer and beacon a lot smoother. We grow a tail. Dante and Sasuke blinked. They shared a quizzical look and realized something. You want us to ask you for an explanation, don't you? said Sasuke Naruto had a petulant look on his face. No ask why no tell why, Yugao laughed. It seems that Naruto did have his intelligent moments. He's right you too. Ask and you shall receive, Dante and Sasuke were both irate. That is until they had a brilliant idea. Naruto's eyes narrowed when he saw the cheeky smiles on their faces. Okay Naruto would you please explain your play, 
asked Dante, to those of us who don't speak idiot, said Sasuke Naruto glowered. You could practically hear his teeth grinding together. However he decided to not attack his friends, he would maintain his cool, for now. Says the guys who got nothing, maintaining his cool had nothing with him not lashing out at them verbally. Unfortunately the jab just seemed to further amuse them. Yugao put her hand on his shoulder. Don't mind them Naruto, pacified Yugao, I am very interested in hearing your plan, Naruto sighed deeply. Yugao really was the mediator in their group. A few months ago I read about cheetahs and how they use their tails as some kind of stabilize. The tail allows them to reach maximum speeds and maintain their mobility at full throttle. It got me thinking, what if we can do something like that? Dante became thoughtful. The plan was sound, as compared to his crazy plans. But there were several anomalies with Naruto's play. Sasuke knew that Naruto wasn't the smartest guy around, but the dobe was very creative when he wanted to be. However he had questions, your plan is full of holes dobe said Sasuke, the first problem is that we can't create a stabilizer, our chakra will be stretched too far to make one. Not to mention the fact that cheetahs can't maintain their speeds for long, said Dante, so even if we can generate some kind of stabilizer with our chakra, it will tire us out quickly, now it was Naruto's turn to grow a cheeky smile. His friends gazed at him intently. You already know how to solve those problems, asked Yugao, two words, chakra crystals, said a smug Naruto Dante laughed out loud when he figured out Naruto's play. It was bloody perfect, it was insane. Sasuke groaned, Dobe do you even know what you're asking us to do? It's crazier than any of Dante's plans, Yugao however wasn't following what they were talking about. She knows that Taft is known for her jewels and precious gems, but chakra crystals? I can't believe I'm saying this, but can someone please explain this plan to me, asked Yugao Naruto of course was. All too happy to oblige her request. It felt good to be the one doing the explanations for once. Taft is known for their jewels. However, the thing about Taft's jewels is that they can be altered into something else. Historians speculate that that the first Hokage's necklace was grown from a Taft jewel. That is what made the city so famous. Yeah but the punchline is that, no one has been able to make a chakra crystal since then so it remains a speculation, said Sasuke, oh don't be such a sourpuss Sasuke, scolded Dante, if someone did then so can we, let's say that this works, said Yugao, then the crystals would help you stabilize your chakra? Naruto glowed. This is the fun part of his plan. The chakra crystals will not just act as a stabilizer for our chakra. It will take our chakra manipulation skills to a whole other level. The beacon and buffer techniques will come to us as easy as breathing, so what's the downside of the plan, asked Yugao, there are only two downsides to the plan, said Dante, finding the right kind of jewel and synthesizing it, Sasuke groaned, you say it like it's easy. Taft's underground is literally filled with jewels, both the useful ones and the useless ones. If the citizens of Taft haven't found a strong enough gem to synthesize, what makes you think that we will have better luck? Simple, said Dante, I don't know, yeah and we won't know until we try, said Naruto, exactly, said Dante Sasuke scowled darkly at his best friends. The worst part is that their plans always worked out. So Sasuke fully expected them to find a strong crystal. His problem was the synthesis process, they would have to feed their chakra and blood into the crystal via skin contact. The journals on crystal synthesis didn't attach how long the process would take, it did however state three things. The process was extremely deadly, they had to tie their life energy to the crystal after all. The process will end when the synthesis seal on the crystal vanishes. Finally the process will place a strain on their chakra capacity, it'll make using chakra twice as difficult. I'm definitely not going to let these two plan our last trip. I need to start working on our next play before their plans get me dead. Taft Sasuke snarled, I blame you both for this, ma, ma I don't think this anyone's fault, said Yugao, yeah team how were we supposed to know this was going to happen, said Naruto, one time is a coincidence, when it happens again it stops being a coincidence. 
You two attract trouble wherever you go, gritted Sasuke, while trouble must have it bad for us, said Dante, I guess being awesome has some downsides after all, Yugo sighed. They were currently hiding on top one of the buildings in Taft. The second they entered the city she knew that something was very wrong. Everyone was smiling happily, every single person. At first she thought that they had come on some important date or something. That all changed when Dante discreetly chucked a stone at one of the citizens. The man's blissful expression didn't drop for a second, he even picked up the stone and thanked it for coming to him. After that they decided not to stay out in the open, just in case. I wonder what is making them all so happy Databeo, said Naruto, hmm maybe they knew that we were coming, said Dante, so they decided to take leave of their sanity before I caused them to, everybody sweat dropped when they heard that, the funny part is that Dante actually believed that to be true. How about we pretend that it's not that, said Yugo Dante pouted, but I like that reason, Sasuke just decided to let it go. They had bigger problems than Dante's crazy wishes, he just found something complicates their situation. Check out the posters on that wall over there, said Sasuke, annual ramen festival, asked Yugo Naruto suddenly became wide-eyed. That's right the annual ramen festival is going to be held in Taft this year, said Naruto, this is atrocious, so many ramen lovers will come here in less than three days. We have to stop whatever this is, now. Dante turned to Sasuke in shock. He whispered to him, did you know that Naruto knew that word? Sasuke was just as stunned. I'm not even convinced he can spell it, hey Naruto, said Dante, spell atrocious, Naruto gave them a withering glare. Ramen lovers are at stake. This is no time for horseplay, Dante and Sasuke jaws dropped. First atrocious and now horseplay, said Dante, I think Naruto's been reading the dictionary, that is the only explanation, said Sasuke Yugao could see Naruto's patience snapping. While she did not share his devotion for ramen, she could agree that they couldn't afford to waste time. The first problem with their current situation is that they had very little to work with. She had tried to see if she could find some kind of chakra signature but she couldn't. That means that there was no way of tracking the source of the mind control, and seeing as they didn't have a Yamanaka with them they couldn't interrogate the villagers either. This was not going to be an easy mission. Okay let's organize what we know, said Yugao, then we can decide what to do next, for one thing we at least know the target, said Sasuke, something as big as the ramen festival is bound to draw in a lot of people. I am willing to bet that a few important nobles will show up too, judging from the amount of traffic in the streets, it is safe to assume that the process is fast. Said Dante, and the doer is capable of affecting a large number of people at a time, what part of that makes you think that the process is fast, said Naruto, the doer could have been affecting them one at a time over a long period, if that is the case then someone would have noticed someone is wrong with the city, said Dante, if the people in charge of planning the festival are as professional as I think, then they would have people giving them constant reports on the city. If they get wind that more than one person is acting like that, they would have pulled the plug, the question is who has the kind of juice to do that, asked Yugo, Taft is a very big city yet we didn't find one normal person in our earlier sweep, Dante suddenly realized something. The jewels. They run underneath the entire city and they can power a jutsu this size. That must also be how the people were affected so quickly, so you're saying that someone synthesized the entire mine beneath us? Asked Yugo, no, said Sasuke, those crystals are capable of reflecting energy, all they would need to do is synthesize one big crystal. If they do that, then all they would need to do is use a seal to connect the main crystal to several key crystals in the mines, they do that and every other crystal will light up, said Dante, that of course makes it extremely difficult to find the chakra source, okay so that answers, how, said Yugo Naruto was getting impatient but the comment Yugo made had him curious. What do you mean, how? Dante smirked, now that's the Naruto we all know and love, Yugo giggled, Naruto in every investigation five questions are always involved. There is the how it happened, why it happened, when it happened, who is it involved, and finally where it happened. We need to answer at least three of those questions before we make a move. 
But that'll take forever, groused Naruto, we don't know what the mind control is doing to them. Dobe I know this is the point where your recklessness pushes you into doing something stupid, but we are dealing with an unknown here. How do you know that you won't be affected if you charge the enemy? I refuse to be mind controlled by some pricks to Bayo, declared Naruto, we need to help them, no one is saying that we won't, said Dante, but Sasuke's right we need to think this through, Naruto's mood turned sour. While they were here debating, the enemy was doing who knows what to the people of this city. He knew that they needed a plan, but the thought of just sitting here while the citizens of the city were in trouble grated on his nerves. Yugao knew that if they didn't make a move soon then Naruto would go off on his own. Naruto was a stubborn hothead, a very bad combination. In truth if they could find out how the citizens were affected then they would know how to avoid it. But the only way to do that with the resources at their disposal would be to experience it themselves. Now I know that I am losing my mind thought Yugao the plan forming in her mind was beyond reckless. However considering their current situation they didn't have much of a choice. Taking a deep breath, she turned to face Sasuke and Dante, Naruto's plan has more merit than I am comfortable with. Right now we don't have any way of getting any real information. The only option we have left would be to find out how the jutsu works and storm the castle, everyone stared at her with shock. Written on their faces. The Yugao they knew would prefer to take the cautious approach and this plan was anything but cautious. Dante of course loved to see her like this. Sasuke however could feel a headache forming, but he did have an idea on the jutsu's baseline. Most likely the jutsu uses the victim's sense of fear or pleasure to take root, Sasuke that's brilliant, said Dante, humans respond most to those two feelings, so they are trapped in their worst nightmare, asked Naruto, or their greatest desire, said Sasuke Naruto snarled, we have to help them, all we have to do is ignore the base right? If you saw a ghost would you be able to keep fighting? asked Sasuke Naruto's fists clenched. His gaze became hard, to save all these people, yes, then off to the mine entrance, stated Dante, that's most likely the enemy's location, Sasuke massaged his temples as he watched Naruto and Dante take off. His friends were too much sometimes. Are you annoyed I supported the reckless plan, asked Yugao Shi and Sasuke formed the voice of reason and logic in their party. So while she was sure Dante and Naruto were happy with her choice. She wanted to know what Sasuke thought. I only supported the plan because I don't see any other option. It doesn't mean I'm always going to go down that route, Sasuke gazed at her with an inscrutable look on his face. The intensity of the stare reminded Yugao that Sasuke's age had nothing to do with his maturity. His dark eyes were also a bit intimidating especially when you remember what those eyes are capable of. After what felt like an eternity Sasuke just sighed, we need to go with them. Heavens knows what kind of trouble they will get into without us they're holding them back, the us, in his statement answered Yugao's question. She smiled in relief, she didn't want Sasuke thinking that everyone around him was crazy. There was only so much one person can handle after all. Mine entrance when they arrived at the entrance Yugao decided to use her chakra senses, it turned out to be a big mistake. She immediately dropped to the ground holding her head in pain. The boys rushed to her but she couldn't process that fact with the migraine she had. It felt like someone had shoved their hand deep into her psyche, her pain stemmed from having her mental defenses annihilated. Naturally she turned off her senses, but at least she knew what the enemy was using to trap his victims. Just before the pain passed an image of Kanoha ablaze flashed in her mind. Sasuke hated this feeling. He didn't know what caused Yugao to scream in pain. He hated the fact that he couldn't do anything but watch her hold her head in pain. Thankfully after a couple minutes she seemed to catch her breath. The experience gave him new meaning to the term heart attack. That hurt, Dante smirked, you don't say I thought it tickled, Yugao managed a strained chuckle. Sasuke just pinched the edge of his nose in relief. What was that? About Tabeo? asked Naruto, I tried to use my sensory ability to scan the mines. Turns out that you guys were right, the mines are filled with chakra. I also found out what the jutsu attacks, the victim's worst nightmare. 
Naruto already bad mood worsened. He was able to control his impatience because he hoped that the citizens were trapped in good dreams, but this changed everything. Now they had to find the asshole doing this and beat him to a bloody pulp. Sasuke gave Naruto a withering glare. Don't even think about it, gritted Sasuke needless to say, Naruto didn't appreciate Sasuke's tone. Those people are trapped in their worst fears team, we have to help them right now, and what good will you be if you join them, asked a surly Sasuke Yugao's senses won't work in those minds. So we would be walking into enemy territory without any knowledge of where we are going. That will be beyond stupid, even for you. We go nowhere without a plan. Dante smiled as he watched Sasuke and Naruto glare at each other fiercely. They both had good points, they were on a clock and they needed a plan. Dante knew that he really shouldn't be smiling in this kind of situation but seeing two kitty alpha males stare each other down was funny. Yugao was just glad for the space to catch her breath and build her defenses back up. The enemy was a dangerous one she will give him that, but they had a mission to carry out. In ANBU we have a saying, if you can't be a bear, be a fox, very poetic, said Dante Sasuke sighed in frustration. There was nothing poetic about what she said, but he did make him curious. What does that mean? It means that if you can't breach the castle to catch your prey, then give your prey a reason to come out of the castle, but how would we do that? asked Naruto Dante snapped his fingers in excitement. I've got it. All we have to do is leave the city. Naruto glowered darkly at Dante for even suggesting something like that. There was no way he was going to abandon this city, but he decided to give Dante the chance to explain himself first. If he didn't like the explanation then he will go off on his own. Think about, whoever is doing this wants to be as discreet as possible. We already know what they're up to, and after what just happened they know that they have a loose end. So you think that they will leave the mines, their biggest advantage just to tie up a loose end, asked Sasuke, that is a very big if, Dante glared at Sasuke. Oh I'm sorry, what's your plan? Oh that's right, you got nothing, Sasuke twitched in annoyance. Out of the corner of his eye, he could see how close Naruto was to going off on his own. The dobe was very wrong if he thought that he didn't want to save the people of this city too. He however was not ready to sacrifice his best friends in a blind rescue. They couldn't go in and they couldn't bank on the enemy coming out, tie that in with the ticking clock and Sasuke was getting very irritated fast. Just then Sasuke had an idea, what if we disrupt their jutsu, asked Sasuke, is there any way we can disable the crystals even only for a short period of time? Naruto who just about to go rogue stopped. Sasuke had a valid point and he was right. Yes there is a way to temporarily disrupt the chakra chain. Since they are only using one crystal all we have to is create a pole strong enough to cancel out the reflections, Dante smirked, now we are cooking with salt, disrupting the reflections would also give me the chance to find the main crystal, said an impressed Yugao, once we do that we can find the enemy pretty easily, alright let's do this, said Dante. In order to cancel out reflections this strong we would have to create a charge with our combined chakra, to say Dante was excited about. Creating the first ever chakra EMP would be a severe understatement. The boys stepped a foot away from the entrance. Yugao didn't need her sensory ability to be impressed at the amount of chakra they were generating. The sheer amount of control they used to compress their chakra into a ball and explode it towards the cave was nothing short of amazing. Immediately the ball exploded Yugao fired up her senses, once she felt the chakra in the mines dissipate she gave the boys the OK signal and they took off. Unlike the caves in Lindars, the mines underneath Taft glowed, thanks to the torches and crystals. Yugao was able to locate the main crystal and the team guarding it. She counted five people, though judging from the chakra coming off the main crystal there was someone next to it. They found their prey seating on top a crystal throne with five masked guards surrounding her. The entire throne room was covered in crystals. Yugao could feel the chakra network coming back up, that means that a stealth attack was out of the question. 
Hmm, she's hot, said Dante, and I like her style, Dante was not exaggerating about the woman being beautiful. She had long curvy dark hair with dark seductive eyes. She was wearing a long black gown that did little to hide her assets. The cold smile on her face made her a truly deadly woman. Naruto however wasn't impressed with her but he filled the appeal she had for future purposes. Thinking about her would have to wait considering the fact that she turned her head dead at their location, are you going to hide up there all day? She's good, admitted Sasuke, the throne room is a few feet below us surrounded by crystals and a pool leaking the edges. What are you suggesting, asked Yugao however suggestions would have to wait, two of the guards were hauling ass to their location. Quickly they spilt up and landed on the ground where the other three rushed at them. Each of the guards brandished a scythe and they knew how to use it. Yugao ended up with two while the boys got one each. Of course the proper thing to do would be to fight them individually, but they were anything but proper. Dante threw. Five kunai into the air above him and four into the ground a few feet away, the rest of the team got the message instantly. Naruto grabbed his opponent's leg and substituted both of them with the kunai. Sasuke and Yugao followed less than a spilt second later. The play was simple, they would all grab an opponent and use the substitution technique to place them all in one place and substitute themselves out of the way. Once that was done the fireworks had to go off, quick, fire style, wind style, water style, combination, great steam dragon, the results of their training spoke volumes. The great steam dragon roared loud and hungry, it consumed the five guards instantly removing the need for a clean-up crew. Yugao was impressed, as was their enemy giving the fact that she rose from her throne to clap for them. Well that was quite exquisite, Yugao could see how tired the boys were. They may be capable of creating a deadly dragon but their chakra capacity still couldn't handle it just yet. That meant that taking out this woman was up to her. There is no way she was going to let her get away. May I know the names of my new guards? Naruto became incensed. He understood that killing was part of life as a shinobi, but the woman wasn't even bothered that her men were dead. We are not your guards, gritted Naruto, is that why you used mind control on the people of Taft? Oh them, asked the female, I did that because I wanted to, everyone went still. Naruto was the first to break from shock. And boy was he mad, you forced them to relieve their worst fears for that? The lady used her finger to pick her ear, she had a nonchalant look on her face, are you always so loud? Before Naruto could floor her he heard Dante laughing beside him. Why are you laughing, asked Naruto Dante stood up and smirked at the lady. Name Sarutobi Dante, what's your name? Rosalia, I have to say I like you very much, said Dante Naruto snarled at Dante. You could practically feel the rage rolling off him in waves. What are talking about Dante? Dante turned to him with a smirk. Most bad guys have some kind of sob story but she is a bad guy because she wants to. She's not blaming life she genuinely just loves being bad. That rare and I like it. Rosalia smirked, I like you too, tell me is your friend always so emotional? Dante sighed despondently, more than you'll ever know, it is a pain sometimes, Yugao and Sasuke shared a stunned look when Rosalia laughed. Naruto looked ready to pop a blood vessel. Dante was chatting amicably with someone they were supposed to be fighting. It was enough to throw anybody for a twirl. Well if that's the case perhaps you would like to join me, asked Rosalia, I'm tempted, said Dante, tell me, what's in it for me? Rosalia shrugged absently. That depends on what you want, and what do you want? This time Rosalia smirked. It was so sly, so sanguine Dante loved it immediately. I want what I want and I get what I want, I'm in love with you, said Dante, but you know that we have to fight right? Rosalia actually pouted. Mao that's too bad. Do you have any last requests? Yeah I got one, boom, before anyone could guess what he meant the crystal throne exploded, Rosalia was barely able to get away in time. After the chakra pulse she had devoted much of her chakra to recharging the throne, so when it exploded her network was disrupted for a few seconds. 
Dante knew that Yugao was fast enough to utilize those few seconds and he wasn't disappointed. Yugao charged Rosalia and swung her blade killing her instantly. With the mission over everyone turned to face Dante, how did you do that to Bayo? Dante blinked, titling his head he asked, did I do something? You made her throne crystal explode, how? asked Sasuke, oh that, said Dante a few seconds passed before Sasuke lost it, how did you do that? gritted Sasuke, say did what and I swear I will kill you, Dante stuck his tongue out at Sasuke. There is a limit to how much chakra a crystal that heavily synthesized can take, so you fed it chakra until it exploded, asked Yugao, that's very much like you, so that's why you were talking with her, said Naruto, you were stalling until the limit broke, oh no I actually enjoyed talking with her, Naruto deadpanned, sometimes I don't understand you, but do you trust me, asked Dante Naruto twitched. It wasn't like he thought Dante would actually join the woman. He just didn't like the idea of chatting with someone like that. Yes I trust you, that's all I need to know, said Dante, now I do believe we have some crystals to pick. I got dibs on the ruby up there. One, I've got one more question, said Naruto, why didn't she die when the crystal exploded? Well I was only able to blow up large chunks out of the throne, said Dante, but you gotta admit that was an utterly brilliant plan, utterly crazy is more like it, said Sasuke Dante glowed and hugged Sasuke when he said that. Ah uh, Sasuke-chan I just love it when you flatter me, get off me lunatic, growled Sasuke of course Dante didn't do that. Yugao and Naruto laughed as they watched Sasuke try to fight off Dante's hugs. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Guys, make sure to help the author by visiting the link in the description. This is Fox Sage, and I'm signing off.